strike up the band as we begin our new lesson. And I think as we going to say, first of all, this is a Liberty Bible course. Subject on music. We can get the information at the end of the video where you can send for these books. Um, if I got time, I'm thinking about doing a little extra study uh, in addition to this book, but we'll see what the Lord does with time. You need a King James Bible, or else your answers are going to be wrong. Now, if you follow along with our other, other studies, we're not in a hurry. We got this tiny little book up here, and we got to the rapture or death to finish. I want you to get this because we're going to do music. And brother, sister, I have seen some terrible things in churches with music. It's important. Part one is the content, the content of music. Part A. We should sing scriptural music. That's important. Didn't you read over there in 1 Corinthians where it says that Jesus Christ died, was buried, and rose from the dead, all according to scripture? Have you read the New Testament where it says, Thus saith the Lord? Scriptural music means it better be out of the mouth of God and not Satan. When writing this song, we're talking about the words of the song, the content. By scriptural, we mean according to the truth of God's word. I'm going to tell you right now, I got over here in my CD collection, I got a moron singing about on Good Friday. And that's a lie from the pit of hell because you cannot get 72 hours from Friday to Sunday. No way, no how. But he sings a whole song about Good Friday. Liar. Liar. Your songs are set on hell fire. Maybe you. I'm the kind of person, listen, I, if your works don't follow the word of God, I doubt your salvation. I'll tell you that right now. Not scripture. The words of a song are never to be contrary to anything that the Bible teaches. And there are plenty of songs out there, I use that word properly, songs, that are contrary to scripture. Ephesians 5.19 Ephesians 5.19 to the New Testament Christian born again today till the rapture happens. 5.19 Speaking to yourselves. You're allowed to talk to yourself. In Psalms, that's the book of Psalms, the 150 chapters, and hymns. Now notice that does not say songs. Let's sing a song now, page number 435. Let's, I'll show you how I know the difference. Ready? H. Y M N S S O N G S. They're not the same. And spiritual songs. There are songs. 
Songs are not hymns. Singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Speaking to yourselves. You're in your car. You're at the light. You're singing to the Lord. And people look at you like, wow, that guy's fruitcake. Today, the modern thing is like that. You're sitting in your car. You're talking to yourself. you got this stupid thing in your ear. You're talking on the phone to somebody else. And not God. Colossians 3.16. Colossians 3.16. You heard John 3.16? What about Colossians 3.16? Let the word of Christ. Well, that's your Bible. In the beginning was the word, the word John 1.1. 1, 1. Dwell in you richly in all wisdom. Dwell in you. Be inside you. This book is supposed to be inside you. In your heart, in memory. Teaching and admonishing one another in Psalms. There's that Psalms again. And hymns. And spiritual songs. Singing with grace in your hearts. To the Lord. Okay, we're going to break these down now. What is a psalm? Can you give me a definition of a psalm? P S A L M. James 5:13. James 5:13. James 5:13 states, "Is any among you afflict afflicted? Let him pray." Is any merry? Let him sing psalms. So psalms are to be sung when you're merry. And doesn't Paul say in, in Thessalonians in chapter 4, we're to rejoice evermore? So we're to be singing all the time. Now it's Psalms 898. Psalms 98. So Psalms is something we sing. Psalms 98. Do you know you have a hymnal inside of your Bible? And as you turn to Psalms 98, that's it? Psalms 119 is the is the, the lengthiest chapter in the Bible. And you know what that chapter is all about? It's all about the Word. Psalms 98.5 Sing unto the Lord with a harp and with the harp the voice of a psalm. So James says sing unto a psalm, a psalm. Psalms 98 says a voice of a psalm. And as we turn to Psalm 105.2 Sing unto him. Sing psalms unto him. Talk ye of all his wondrous works. Psalms are words that can be sung. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. What you just do? Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. I sung it. That's a hymn. That's to be sung. But where can we find those words? Where can we find the words to be sung? First Chronicles 16.7 First Chronicles 16.7 I'm going the wrong way. First Chronicles 16.7 I advise you to get these books. They're great. 
You send them off to you, they'll correct them, and they'll give you a little certificate. If, if we're going too fast for you, write them down, check them out later. But so, uh, First Chronicles 16.7 And on that day, David delivered his first song to thank the Lord. So David delivered a, the first psalm, and it was to thank the Lord. You see that Asaph? But Asaph made a sound with the symbols. Study that name in the Bible with music. <coughs> David and Asaph pleased the Lord with their music. And I said, if you're to study that name... You'll see. Verse 4. And he appoints certain of the Levites to minister before the ark of the Lord, and to record, and to thank and praise the Lord God of Israel. Verse 5 and 6. Then record that Asaph was the chief of those that made the music. We see that David wrote psalms. Asaph led the musicians to play the songs on the instruments. The Levites then sang the songs. For are these psalms just David's ideas or poems? Oh, I just got an idea just to write a song so I can make a bunch of money and you know, a bunch of Christians to sell it. Is there a reason? Mark chapter 12, verse 10. Mark 12, 10. And we're going to be all over. Study show thyself approved unto God, a man that needs not to be ashamed. Rightly divine the word of truth. And this is going to kick some. But I don't care. I'm going to preach and teach the truth if you like it or not. You have, a, you have your discussion with God. I like it is one of the fuel of flames for hell. I like it. God never asked what you like. Mark 12.10 And have you not read the scripture? How many of you have never read the Bible? The stone which the builders rejected has become the head of the corner. Now back to Psalms 118.22 You say, what did that have to do with music? Psalms 118, 22. The stone which the builders refuse has become the headstone of the corner. Now you probably think, I'm just as lost as we were in back in Mark. Mark says that the phrase is Scripture. Have you not read the scripture, it said? David wrote more than just his ideas. Psalms. We've already saw it was a hymnal. It's a song written by David, right? Read 118.22 again. The stone, all right, the stone which the builders refused. It's become the head of the stone of the corner. I know I didn't sing it right, but I never praised to be a singer. Sing it. But what did Mark tell you in chapter 12, verse 10? You just sang scripture. Imagine. Yea, all they that suffer godly shall, I mean, all they that live godly shall suffer persecution. 
It's scripture. And it was sung. And it's in the hymnal in the Bible. David wrote more than just his ideas. God used him to write scripture, the word of God, the Bible, which is a hymn. Psalms 118. We're studying the whole thing about music. It ain't just tapping your fingers and tapping your toes and playing whatever you want to do. It ain't just something because I like it. It has to go with the Bible. It has to match what God says. Now, if it doesn't match what God says, who do you think is the other part of the story then? Satan. If it's not God, then it's Satan. 2 Timothy 3.16. Well, there's another 3.16. 2 Timothy 3.16. We know John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believe in him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. But we've seen three, two 3.16s that involve singing and because of John 3 16 you are to sing how's that 2 Timothy 3 16 what did Mark say about uh, Psalm 118 22 he said it was scripture now watch this verse 16 all scripture By what we learn with Mark 12 and Psalm 118, all hymns. I'm not changing the Bible. As far as this study, all hymns, which is scripture, are to be scripture. And if it's not, it's wrong. But if you have a proper hymn, all scripture is given by the inspiration of God. That hymn is to be inspired by God. Not Satan in the world. And it's profitable. There are music groups out today. It is very profitable. Cash, check, or money order. But that's not what we're talking about here. We're not talking about money. What's the profit for doctrine? How many times have your preacher, before he's got up to the message... He tells you over at the Bible and say, listen, I want us to sing this hymn or I want us to, to, to turn to this page because this hymn has to do with today's message. Or have you ever had the song leader in your church pick out a particular hymn, the pastor gets up, okay, open up your Bibles to such and such, and you're not going to believe it, but that hymn that we just sang or the hymn that we sang earlier, that has to do with our message. That's the Holy Spirit working. The hymns that you do and listen and play and put in your ears are to give you insight and profitable for doctrine of the Bible and not Satan and your flesh. For reproof. For correction. A hymn giving you correction? When? Just as I am, without one plea, get your butt up to the altar and plead before God. How about that? For instruction of righteousness. Well, how can a hen do instruction of righteousness? Bring it in the sheaves. Bring it in the sheaves. Are you bringing in sheaves? I don't even know what a sheaves is. Ah, for instruction of righteousness, go look it up. And then do what that hymn tells you to do. Sweet hour of prayer. Sweet hour. You ever pray for an hour? Have you ever looked at the words of sweet hour of prayer? Tell me what sweet hour of prayer is all about. Do you know what that, if you've read those words, 
I'll leave it to you to go to your hymnal and read those words and find out what that hymn is truly about. That the man of God may be perfect. Now it's not complete 100%. That means your heart. Your motives are to do what God wants you to do. And today's modern Christian music is anything but. It's all fleshy. You take this music today, count all the I, me, and one Jesus. And because that one Jesus in there, it's a Christian song. Is the Bible about you, me, myself, and I? Or is it about Jesus? Thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Are the hymns that you sing, do they furnish your Christian life? Are they something that can be used with the weapon tree that God's giving you, the armor? You ever study the armor? Second Peter one twenty. Second Peter one twenty. You say, why are you getting so angry? I have perfect reason to be angry. Because I see Satan working. We may get into all that, I don't know. First Peter one twenty. Knowing this first. Get this. This is first. Get it. Knowing this first. Before you get this whole study down pack, and I know all about music, get this first. That no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. I have no right to say the Bible says and it does not say. As I said about that guy who sang about Good Friday. Good Good Friday! For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man. Your music today, most of your music is by the will of man. But holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Are the hymns you singing, men who wrote them, not for their own personal satisfaction, but wrote them because the Holy Spirit dwelled in their heart? I'm trying to think of a hymn right now. I can't think of the name of it. Oh. Can't think of it. But there was a, I'll tell you, you may you know what it is, but there's a, a man who sent his, his wife and daughter off on a back in the olden days when they had ships and all that. And the ship sank and his wife and his daughter died. He took the boat passage and he asked the captain, he says, Listen, I'm such and such person. When we get near that spot, Can you tell me where my wife and my daughter somewhere in that area where they died? Captain agreed with him. And the time came up and that guy leaned over the rail or whatever he did and said, And can it be that I should gain an interest in where his wife and daughter died? He wrote a hymn about Jesus Christ. I hope I got the right hymn when I did that. If I didn't, I'm wrong. I believe it is, and can it be? Acts 1.16 They're not 
The hymns were not sung for money. They weren't sung to put your name on the page. You know what Amazing Grace is all about? Have you read the story about John Newton? That's another boat ship, ship story. I'm not going to tell you. I want you to go find them. I am terrible with names. I'm trying to think of another name here and I can't get it. Acts 116. Don't come to me. Men and brethren, this scripture must needs have been fulfilled, which the Holy Ghost by the mouth of David spank before concerning Judas, which got which was guide to them that took Jesus. All right. Men and brethren, this scripture must needs be fulfilled. Let's go to Psalm 41.9. Back to the hymnal. Psalm 41.9. Psalm 41.9. Psalm. One forty Psalm forty one nine, excuse me. Psalm forty one nine. Psalm Remember I told you Psalm was singing. Yea, my own familiar friend in whom I trusted, which did eat of my bread, has lifted up his heel against me. What did Acts one sixteen say that was I just sung? What did Mark 12 say that Psalm 18, 118, 22 was? I just sang scripture. In the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. We need to sing songs that are scriptural. Here's another one. Can you tell me where... Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days, all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I shall feast at the table spread for me. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me. You know what that is? Do you know that is a scriptural hymn? Scriptural song, I'll tell you, Psalms 23, the last verse, or the second to last, second last and the last verse. That is a scriptural sound, song, excuse me. Where do you find scriptural song? Jesus, 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 Jesus. Where do you find that? And he touched me, and he did this to me, and he did this. I, 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 oh, I do. I, I, yeah, 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 yeah. I know who said I. I will, I will, I will, I will. Isaiah 14, Satan. The eye of the songs that today are promoted in churches are after Lucifer. You don't like it? It's the truth. Sanctify them by through thy word. Sanctify them through truth. Ah, I'm misquoting that verse. Thy word is true. What it says. And if you don't like that, you got a problem with the word, not me. You need to get right. I am opening the Bible. I am quoting the scriptures to you. Open up the hymnals. Take the hymnals that you sung in church last Sunday and find them in the Bible. Then we'll talk. You're getting to eat me and angry. You need it. You need to wake up. 
That that song that churches say, I love thy rock and wills. You love rocks? Come on! Where do you see in the Bible you're the love of rock outside of Jesus Christ? What, you got a pet rock? You hug it, kiss it, romance it? Thy truth is marching on. Oh, baloney! Baloney! Truth is marching on. You never witnessed. You never told anybody about Jesus Christ. You never been to a public and said, Hey! Jesus saves! You see how much truth marches on. You never been in a, in a church where anything but the truth. It's got to match scripture. Honda's Messiah is full of King James verses. You can find them all. Okay, calm down now. Songs that have Bible truth in them. Bible truth. Bible truth. You get up there and say, Jesus loves me, this I know. For the Bible tells me so. Alright, here's the Bible. Tell me where it says it. I, it's in the Bible. That is scriptural song. Jesus loves me is a scriptural song. Now tell me where it says the Bible. The Bible tells me so. Okay, tell me where. Are you teaching the children? Jesus loves me, this I know. And the Bible tells me. Are you teaching the kids where, where it is? Come on now. You got to know where it is. Scriptural songs can help you because the Bible says, let's go to Romans 10, 17. Romans 10, 17. I love you. That's why I'm doing these videos. That's why I gotta get excited. I gotta wake you up. I've never heard such a thing. Yeah, that's the problem. You never have. I gotta speak loud to get it out. To express myself through the word. So Romans ten seventeen. So then faith cometh by television. And the movies by no, no, no. Faith cometh by hearing. You know what you hear during a song service can result in greater faith in the Lord or worldliness. It's either or. Either the music is going to praise God or is going to praise Satan. Godly music. So faith cometh by hearing. Well, what do you mean? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? And some guy's lost sitting there like, No, I'm not. Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? And some woman's sitting over there like, No, I'm not. I have no idea what they're singing about. And the preacher gets up there and preaches a message about the soul. And the Holy Spirit works through the song service. The Holy Spirit works through the message. The Holy Spirit works through the preacher. The Holy Spirit's working on that soul. And they come up to the altar and receive Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. So faith cometh by hearing. And hearing by the word of the Lord. Um, by the word of God. Now what if you do? You got trash music up there. And it's all about me, myself, and I. That lost sinner sits in the pew, walks out of the church. I'm so good, yes I am. Think I'll head down to Sam's. The guy that will meet me be nice and happy, just like those people in the church place too. What's your music do? Does it does it please the flesh or does it please the Lord? Is it scriptural? It does it point to Jesus.
That means anything I could sing. I can't. Clash. Okay, part B. I you know what. I think we'll stop right there. We'll stop with hymns. We'll stop with Psalms. Excuse me. Next week, Lord willing, we'll pick up hymns. But what is Psalms? It's scripture applied to music. And you don't even need music. A cappella. You don't have to be loud. You don't even have to be vocal. There have been times, listen, I've taken traditional hymns. I don't know, have you ever done this? If you just take a traditional hymn and you just sing it in your heart and you add your own words to it, to what the Lord has done in your life, have you ever taken a hymn and personally applied it to the Lord? With Scripture. The verses and all that. And have you ever looked back like, wow, I didn't even know I knew that. Is all the praise the word, John 1.1, 1, 1, which is Jesus Christ? Is that, that that's... We've seen what we read in Psalms has been backed up in the New Testament as Scripture. That's number one. But you get so excited. Yeah, if you know the damage. Because I know what the damage Satan can do. I'm going to close with this. Christian, save, love the Lord. Let me ask you a question. You sing the right hymns, you're in the right church, you got the right Bible, your preacher preaches, amen and glory to God. Have you ever been in a, in a, in a store, and you're shopping around, your wife's shop or whatever, you're sitting, next thing you know, the song that's over the PA system, you're humming or singing it. That you heard 10, 5, 15, 20 years ago. I have. I'll, I'll be honest. I have. I have found myself in a store singing, singing the song that's over the PA system. Because it's still here. It's still here. And if Satan can get this with the world and music and call it Christianity, he won. You're supposed to get relief from the Word of God. You're supposed to get the, the, the fruits of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace. By music that's all about you. A piece of dirt cloth. What was the old song? Ready? Dust in the wind. That's all we are is dust in the wind. And you're supposed to get happiness and joy, all that. Pray for us about these studies. Because they're serious. There's nothing to fool around with. It's like the money. Get these videos out. Watch them. And I'm not apologizing for nothing. I'm not apologizing for the scripture. I'm not apologizing for my tone of voice. I'm not apologizing unless I make a mistake. But I'm going to preach and teach what God has me to do. That's all.